Good news, AstroVlog fans. Today I submitted a paper for publication. Yes, I am a dad, and that is an awkward dance. At this point in my career, this is something I've done like a couple dozen times. It's still not easy, but there's a bit of a routine to it. I was reminded of an email that I had with a student years ago. We had just submitted a big paper for publication, and they wrote me an email saying, I don't know what it means when you say we're having a paper refereed. And I thought, of course, we have to explain these things. So, let's just review how do papers go from ideas to journal articles. Okay, step one is you have a great idea, you work on it for a very long time, possibly. You make graphs, you analyze data, you make measurements, and then you write a paper. But this is glossing over immensely. This could take years to go from nascent idea to, to a written draft. And then you're done with like step one of ten. Step two is submit it. You submit it to a journal. This usually means you pick one of the main astronomy journals. Now there's a lot of debate about which journal. That's like a different video or series of discussions. Usually you're submitting through an online website, a portal, you're uploading all the documents. So this would be all the figures, usually as PDFs, and the, manu the actual typed up manuscript. In astronomy, this is typically in a language we call LaTeX or LaTeX, uh, but never LaTeX. Step two complete, you have now submitted your paper to a journal. Step three, the journal will assign an editor. For a small journal, there might just be one editor. But for the big journals, like the AAS journals, there are editors for all different subject matters, stars, galaxies, cosmology, software. This person's job is to shepherd the paper through this whole process to make sure that it's fair and rigorous. The editor is your friend, or at least should not be your enemy. They can make your life way easier. Be nice to the editors. Okay. Step four, the editor looks through your paper, gives it a cursory glance to make sure it's not spam, and then tries to find a referee. Now they're going to look for somebody who works in the same sub-discipline or area that your paper is on. Oftentimes there's only so many people who can referee a paper and half of them are on the paper. You kind of develop a rapport with the editors and they sort of trust you to do the job, but there's kind of an honor system going on here. Step five, if the referee is available and willing, is they will read your paper. They're going to go through it with a fine-tooth comb. When I'm refereeing a paper, I'm checking the math, looking at every table, looking at every figure, critically examining all the results. I've had referees go through and even check my code sometimes. All right, the referee has read it, and step six, the referee will write the report. General practice is, is this is usually 10 or 20 issues. These might range from small typos to substantive ideas. These should be productive suggestions, like the kind you would give a friend or a colleague who is asking your advice. That being said, it, it can be combative, and sometimes referees will feel personally slighted that you didn't that you didn't reference their all important groundbreaking work. But regardless, the referee will the referee will write the report and send it to the editor, who will then send it to you. And step seven, you receive your referee report. Congratulations, your paper has now been refereed for the first time. Your job now is to go through and make all the changes, or at least address all the points the referee has raised. You don't have to do everything the referee says. These are suggestions; they're not requirements. If you disagree, that's fine. Explain why you disagree. I usually try to look at. For every point that referee has raised, I need to change something in my paper. Even if the answer is like, the referee just didn't get it. That means that I have failed to make myself perfectly clear to one of my colleagues. Then you write back your report. Now the report usually comes to you as a flat text file and you reply to the report in, with detailed descriptions of everything you changed, again in a flat text file. Even though we're solving the mysteries of the universe, astronomers usually deal in ASCII files. Okay, step, what are we on, eight? The referee will receive your reply, and they either will recommend it for publication, or they will say that it needs more work. This little cycle can go on for a long time. I've had it go on for four or five times. I know horror stories where people have seven, eight, nine, ten rounds of refereeing, at which point the editor will or should intervene to try to narrow the scope of what needs to happen. But assuming the referee is happy with all the changes you've made, then they will usually recommend the paper for publication. And step nine, once that recommendation happens, the journal will almost always accept your paper for publication. Congratulations, your paper is now accepted, or as we will say, in press. The general wisdom is also that this is a good time to submit your paper to the archive, or the open source repository of papers. It might have taken a few months to go from the submission to the end of the referee process, and it might take a few more months to actually be finally published. Submitting to the archive means that once your paper is accepted and kind of finalized, it's not going to really change in substance, and so it's ready to be shared with the community. When you submit to the archive, it takes like a day or two to get posted. Now the last step is the editorial step. The journal's gonna try to get rid of any typos or grammatical errors. There's a step for feedback, but substantively your paper is finished. This last stage is also where you get the bill. 
And let me say, this whole process is very US astronomy specific. In other disciplines and in other countries, they publish differently. We usually only have one referee. In other fields, you might have four referees. Another huge difference in American astronomy journals is that we typically pay what's called page charges. This is a cost of publication. This is a whole other discussion we should do a video about. But the long and short of it is a standard paper is going to cost you one to two thousand dollars. It's a lot of money, and I would never encourage you to pay it out of pocket. This is usually factored into our grants. So the same federal grants that are paying my salary, we also budget in some money for expected publications. This part of the system stinks, but there's no good viable alternative that has really been raised. Okay, and last, and certainly not least, step 10 is your paper is finally published. It's gone from submission to referee to reply, maybe back and forth a couple times, and finally accepted through an editorial review, then at long last published on the internet. Again, this might take six months, and from the point at which you started the project, it could be years. By the time your paper is accepted and published, usually you're halfway down the road working on a new project. The last really interesting issue is the acceptance rate. In astronomy papers in America, the acceptance rate is incredibly high. Like, I don't know what the actual number is, but it's probably over 95% of papers submitted by professional astronomers get accepted eventually. And I don't just mean in some journal, usually in the journal you've submitted it to. Part of this is due to the pay structure and part of it is cultural. This means by and large that astronomers have more publications to their name than some other scientists at a given career stage. Whereas some academics will spend years trying to get a single piece of work published, I should be publishing several manuscripts. I think it allows us to speculate more, to be more imaginative, but it does kind of smack of pay to play. Anyhow, that's a quick review of how papers go from baby ideas all the way to full-fledged articles. If you have more questions about how this process works, or you want to talk about the money, or you'd like me to interview some of the people involved in this, uh, I'm always looking to learn more about how papers are published and how the journals work. Drop a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter. And as always, if you find these videos interesting or useful, it means a lot to me if you can do the social media things, like, subscribe, share the video. It means a ton to me to know that my work is being appreciated by you all. Thanks.